on a rainy day in Galveston. Head on over to Post Office Street amid the art galleries and restaurants. You want it, Lord? You'll find steaming hot coffee and conversation. It's kind of like everybody goes, I don't know where you want to meet. I don't know where do you want. Well, let's go to Maud. Okay. Holly Hopkins bought Maud Coffee House back in 2009, just after it was destroyed by Hurricane Ike. If you look closely, you can still see the water line around the coffee shop. And we're talking, what, nine feet, ten yes. feet? Yeah, it was about nine and a half feet of water. And so everything had to be truly rebuilt from the ground up. And this is the coffee house that community built then, and that they rebuilt after Harvey. These tables were built out of wood from homes destroyed by Ike. Customers came together to build these colorful ones. And for the rest of the decor, well, even Holly isn't sure where it came from. Customers drop off gifts all the time. Our mission here is really very simple. Uh, we want to help people have a better day. You never know what somebody's going to walk through the door with, and um, uh, small things can make a really big difference. And it's those small things that build a community. Welcome. Yeah. You never know who or what you'll run into in the rainforest. These two are a bonded pair. They're both males and uh, they're always together. So if you see one, keep looking. The other one's very close behind. The rainforest pyramid at Moody Gardens features animals and plants from rainforests around the world. 25% of our medicines in use today come from rainforest plants. But, and this is the mind boggling part, less than 1% of rainforest plants have even been tested for medicinal properties. I bet you've never tasted ginger like this. <laughs> Tastes like a sweet tart. Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> Many of the plants and animals here are endangered as their habitats are chopped down and paved over. They also only have one chick at a time. So they put all of their energy into that one chick. But if their tree gets cut down where their nest was, then it's a whole downward effect. Where's my Drew Boo? Munchkin girl, can you hear me? Biologists are hoping to bring back Amazon giant river otters through breeding programs. Standing up, holding, allowing me to touch anywhere on her body. I can file her nails. She lets me brush her teeth. Hold, open, can I see in there? Good. It's probably a good idea to keep this lady happy because her teeth are no joke. They eat about 10 to 15% of their body weight every single day in fish. So we go through a lot of fish I here bet. with our four otters. Um. There is a little bit of everything inside this Galveston store. What isn't Maceo's Spice, to be honest? Don't get me wrong. You can certainly find spices inside Maceo's Spice and Import Company, a product instead of Maceo Sim's grandfather started to sell to restaurants on the island 75 years ago. I guess he saw a hole and filled it. Three generations later, the Spice Queen makes the Maceo's flavors available to anyone. People tell me that my set of Q barbecue tastes like Lay's barbecue chips, so it's the bomb. Yeah, you know what? You don't have to go home to enjoy the flavoring either. Maceo Spice, located near the Strand and Market Street, also offers food, including the muffaletta, which is ham, salami, provolone cheese, homemade olive salad, and bread. It's the best. The Maceo's came from Italy to the U.S. Because of this, customers can also take home imported Italian pasta at the restaurant as well. She rules the roost around here. The unique surprises are only found inside. Outside the business is a Everybody shop's mascot, her. Martha. So she's Market Street's chicken. She just runs around all over. She's a little Maceo chicken. After arriving more than 100 years ago, it appears the Spice Queen isn't going to let the Maceo leave the island anytime soon. Galveston is home. It is a community. It's family. Francisco Paco Vargas is proud of what he's accomplished. 23 years, yes. Yeah. I'm delighted and happy. To that the restaurant take off. Rudy and Paco Restaurant and Bar is a staple on the island, offering South American cuisine, a delicacy enjoyed by many celebrities. Is there any celebrity that you're really excited to meet? Oh, I tell you what, uh, you can see where Tony Bennett, you see Tony Bennett right here? This was a dream Vargas had when he moved from Nicaragua more than 40 years ago. I started working in Houston, 
washing dishes, mopping floor. He traveled to Galveston to manage the Balinese Room, a restaurant only marked by the seawall with a sign after it was destroyed by Hurricane Ike. Before it was ruined, Vargas says the restaurant taught him how to open his own place. The American dream is, you know, when you work hard, it pays and that's what I did myself here. And uh, the com and Galveston will open the door for me. An island that continues to open the door for Vargas's family. Across the street is a new restaurant, Vargas Cut and Catch, which is filled with different photos on the wall. This is Denise when it was a baby. This is Juan when it was a baby. And all three together here. Vargas's kids run this American cuisine restaurant, a place that got a boost thanks to a friend. When banks wouldn't offer a loan, a friend co-signed. Because of this, Vargas dedicated this room to him. Thank God, this, this, this guy got Mr. Peters as a great man with a big heart. Thanks to his friend, Vargas's fairy tale American dream continues in Galveston. A success story, he says, isn't about fortune or fame, but finding a place that opens its doors for you. Work hard, dedicated, and work hard. That's what I knew. Tourists taking in the sights of the island's historic homes. There are five different historical districts here, all with a unique style of homes. But the most popular that were built before 1900 that you can still see today are the Victorian style homes, many able to withstand the big storms over the past 100 years. The 1900 storm, though, stopped a lot of island development at the turn of the century. We talked with Will Wright. He's the chief creative officer for the Galveston Historical Foundation. He says Galveston has one of the greatest concentration of these historic Victorian-style homes in the country. We are lucky to be in a very preservation-minded area. Uh, people have held on to these homes. They've restored them. They continue to purchase them and rehabilitate them. Uh, so to be in an area like Galveston that has such Texas-based history to begin with, to actually have the physical history with it as well is really special. Give Come us on. a tour. Ashley and Michael Cordray really love a project, especially one where they can fix up old historic homes in Galveston. Their passion has featured them on the DIY network show Big Texas Fix. Their most recent reno. Welcome. Their kettle home. The space was very unique to kind of work with. I mean, you have 200 square feet of floor space, but you have about 700 once you get to the ceiling. So we built the beds into the wall to kind of like capitalize on some of that space. A center staircase supports the home. We ended up with this spiral staircase that, that has been here um, that is, is fun and interesting and a little hairy sometimes. The upstairs was another set of challenges. We kind of just worked off of all of the vertical supports of the house. So it's like a pie, so there's different pies for the home. The real trick was furnishing this space. The whole thing of a home like this, because it is round, you know, yeah. and furniture is kind of more squarish, you yeah. have to kind of um, figure out creative ways to adapt to that, right? It was interesting when we brought everything in, it just didn't work, you know? So we ended up putting the couch on the outside wall and kind of facing everything out. I mean, we could have a party in the shower. This is a huge shower. It's huge. Yeah. I, for the whole show, yeah. I think that this is the biggest shower that we built in the smallest house. So I think, I think that this is bigger than my shower at home. It's, it's pretty <laughs> ridiculous, yeah. People are coming here not because it's cute. They're coming because they're in like a metal orb right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's kind of cool. I mean, our show uh, basically started because we wanted to restore old homes. And, and Galveston has a really amazing collection of old historic homes that really need restoration. You come up these beautiful ornate stairs with all of these historic columns and you come into a white room. Mm -hmm. So it's a mental shock as well as a physical shock and then you see the contrast between the historical building and the contemporary art. There's really no way to put this delicately. Uh, how are you doing over there? Couldn't <laughs> <laughs> be better. This is an exhibit about cat butts. It's really funny and humorous just to see like people's reaction to it because it's a little gross, but it's also really funny. And they play with that kind of the grotesque and how you make light of things. The Galveston Contemporary Art Center has been around for 17 years, and you'll find a new exhibit every six weeks. Some will make you feel nostalgic, like this one dedicated to 90s skateboarding culture. It's like a very specific moment in your life right or a brand or he has a uh Thrasher magazines that he's cast and pagers. Others will make you appreciate the beauty around you. 
but it's the unusual ones that really bring in visitors. I mean, who wouldn't want a selfie with a cat butt? Maybe they'll see something here that they didn't realize could be art, and to me that's a goal, is actually to expose the variety of work being made by artists throughout the state. the best way to experience nature is to jump right in. We're gonna go out, we're gonna look at some birds and some nature, talk about uh, wetlands, how important they are, and we're gonna do a little painting today. Okay, uh, kind of makes the paddle act like a spoon and glide you through the water. Sam Norris is part of a local nonprofit called Artist Boat, dedicated to promoting conservation through fun and educational trips just like this. Over the past 16 years, the group has brought thousands of kayakers out to explore the island's estuaries and prairies. Today, we started out with paddles and then moved on to paintbrushes. Just a good way to relax, island time, um, just be away from everything, but not too crowded. So that's the best part about it. I'm probably going to say that I had a really like relaxing vacation in Galveston and I enjoyed kayaking. If you're going to the beaches of Galveston anytime soon, be on the lookout for these kids. It brings people joy when you save their lives. You know, it, I would it think brings so. you joy too. The Galveston Island Beach Patrol Junior Lifeguard Day Camp Program has trained hundreds of young swimmers over the years. Being with people and making the community better is a very good job and I think helping people is amazing. The program is a fun way to stay active in the summer but it's also pretty physically demanding. So much so that almost half of the older kids end up becoming lifeguards every year. The ones who don't can still help their friends and family members if needed. They really push you to your limits and sometimes it can be really hard and you don't know what you're gonna run into out there. This is the moment Kristen Stallones first saw her childhood home after it burned. On Thursday, we showed you the intense flames as they devoured the house. A day later, demolition crews are clearing debris to make it safe for investigators. Stallone says her family is still processing what happened. We're all still in shock and, and I mean, we're, we're getting through it. We're just, I mean, you know. The home was undergoing minor renovations to the kitchen and living room. Two painters were in the home when one of them described to investigators a flash fire. Both were hospitalized, one of them critically. They have worked with us for 20 years. Like, it's not workers. I mean, they were injured, and they, they mean something to us. Stallones was also concerned about the family's pets. Sophie the dog and their cats Teddy and Whitey were not seen after the fire. The Stallones were hoping that somehow the animals survived. It's not the size or the cost of your home, it's your home. And so... It's a devastating loss anytime somebody loses uh, their home or, or uh, property or anything like that. What people need to realize is that this was our family home for 17 years.